Welcome back. A federal high court in Abuja has sacked uh, Yakubu Dogar from the House of Representatives and declared his seat vacant. Mr. Dogara, who represents Bogoro, Das federal constituency of Bauchi State, was the Speaker of the House of Representatives between 2015 and 2019. The judge, D.U. Okoro, on Friday today, ruled that Mr. Dogara's defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress was wrong and meant that he should vacate the legislative seat. Now, joining us Let's discuss this. We have a constitutional lawyer, Chief Festus Oguche. Uh, Chief Oguche, thank you very much for your time. Yes, thanks, Kofi, for inviting me. Uh, it, it seems we're having, uh, you know, yet again to try to understand what exactly the position of the law and the constitution is as regards moving from one party to the other. We have recent cases in point. We have the uh, David Omahi and the Eboyne State case. We have the Crossfire State case involving Governor Benedict Benayade and his deputy, Vare Su. And you have, of course, the members of the Cross River State House of Assembly and two members of the House of Representatives from Cross River State. Um, what is going on? What should we, should we make of all these cases with this one now that has sacked um, the former speaker? Yes, sir. Yes, your question is quite apt, what is going on? But you recall that this has been the tradition ever since we returned to democracy in 1999. Um, it's uh, somewhat becoming something like um, the, 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 the norm that persons can defect from one political party to the other. That is not the democracy. It's not, it's not true of democratic tradition. Apparently, we have lost our way. And we are groping in the dark towards a, in a political end that has no meaning at all. Um, defections are very, very serious. And I know that these um, gain of defections that are currently going on, with people jumping ship from one party to the other, they don't start today. If you recall, immediately upon the coming into power of the All Progressive Congress, there was this. It's, I won't even call it defection. It was more of a migration from one party to the other. A lot of those of the PDP were migrating to that place because maybe it's, it's some state it provides a better umbrella for their protection from um, their arrests and persecution of corrupt matters. And on and on it went. And it is principally because their political parties as they exist are not rooted in philosophy. Or else you see that it is very difficult for one to just wake up overnight maybe a Democrat, to wake up overnight and say he's a Republican today, or for somebody in the Labour Party to wake up, over, wake up overnight and say he belongs to this other party. These are, are, are political parties that are rooted in philosophy. And what those philosophies are the guiding principles of these political parties. It will be difficult for one to be conservative today and be liberal the next day. And that tells also the level of maturity of our political elites and the level of... Uh, of a democratic norm we apply and the constitutional practice that uh, come into play. Uh, I think it's a very unhealthy development. They didn't, the Supreme Court had given legal interpretation to it, and it, that, and they, it, it uh, conforms to the standards all over the world. Uh, you know, that if you defect to a political party and you're in an elective position, you cannot go with the votes. The votes do not belong to you. They say the votes belong to the political party in our own jurisprudence, but it's not even the political party that has those votes. The votes belong to the people who voted it and who are still active and alive within the, the demography of their existence. You know, so it, 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 somebody has even suggested that votes carry with them a juristic personality. It's not something you carry from one place to the other. And that was the issue we raised uh, immediately upon the death of uh, Prince Abuva Karaudu. In, when the election uh, over the governorship in Kogi State was going on, over the possibility of the transferability of votes. But now it has become the, the norm in our political society that once uh, you can see somebody in one political party today and the next day he's in the next political party and he wants to carry the votes that does not belong to him along with them, which is totally wrong. Chief Oguche, uh, 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 some, some political observers and commentators, analysts... I'm not getting you clearly, Kofi. Yeah, yeah. Can, 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 can you hear me, sir? Okay, yeah. yes. Yes. So, some political analysts have said that we need to, we need to um, separate 
uh, the, the morality of the situation and our emotions from the letter. We need to, or we need to have, um, uh, 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 we need to have a, a separation of our understanding that there is a difference between the, the morality or the rightness of, the, of what is going on and what the law says in print, in black and white. Um, so, so you are saying that it's wrong to, you know, uh, uh, be voted into an office, a political position or office on the platform of one party and then, and then go to another party with the mandate that was given to that party. Fine. But what is the position of the Nigerian constitution, which is a ground norm of the federation? See, you don't get all the, the, the Supreme Court has even stated it in DSS against Agbakoba. You will not expect the Constitution to set out every detail of provision regarding all situations. You construe the Constitution both in its letters and in its spirit. And I'm saying that it doesn't have to be contained in any provision of the Constitution for anybody to understand that there's immorality in moving from one political party to the other. If you are in an elected position, if the position you are occupying is by the mandate of the people, and that has been the norm across the world in every democracy, and this has been entrenched as a tradition which cannot for any reason or any shade of imagination be circumvented by any provision of the, whatever provision there is in the Constitution. I know the Constitution is silent in the area of governors and all that, but the, it does not mean there's a lacuna. You know, you won't expect this constitution to spell out everything. If you move from this political party to that, you just but 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 but, but 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 chief, chief Oguche, the constitution is a ground norm, and and we, we it's 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 what what is the bible is of the nation? Ground norm, I agree with you, <laughs> Kofi. But like I say, there's what you call traditions, there's what you call norms, and we are practicing a constitutional democracy. So it's a combination of these principles that you find in a democratic culture, these these doctrines, these these things that combine between the constitution and the principles of democracy that apply. You know, I, to the extent that I understand, the, the right to vote is a fundamental right, and the card, the vote, belongs to people. And once that vote is cast, it becomes a representation of the expression of their will. And you ask me if you express your will in a particular way towards a particular direction, an individual can take it and take it to another direction. It's a, part, it's a matter of morality. The Supreme Court had in the case of Fedeku against Mohamed Goni, which I think is the local classicals on the sections, had stated that defecting from one political party to another is the highest level of political immorality. He says it is malevolent. Malevolent. Look out! To look out for that authority. The Fedeko against Mohammed Goni, and that is the standard across the world. Particularly if you are dealing with people who are in elective positions. If you have the mandate of the people, the votes do not belong to you. There is this erroneous uh, 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 impression that's been bandied all over the place that well, the Supreme Court has said it that belongs to political parties. It doesn't even belong to political parties either. The thing about defection, in, you, in the United Kingdom, if you defect, if you defect, it calls for a by-election. Hello. Yes, but, but Chief Oguche, if, if we were to go back to, to the, the statements by the, the Honorable Justices, we look at the case of I'm David... I'm you clearly. Can yeah. you speak a little Yes, if, if we were to go back to the statements of our Lords, the Honorable Justices, um, we have the case of David Umahi that went on appeal... And, of course, you look at the case of Ben Ayade, uh, the judgment of which relied on the, the statement of the Court of Appeal regarding David Umahi's appeal or case. Um, uh, I'm not quoting these, these uh, judges, but they said that, yes, indeed, the, the actions of these governors were immoral, you know, unjustifiable, so on and so forth. I remember listening to uh, your colleague, uh, Michael Zekome S.A. and Chief Michael Zekome S.A., who defended Ayade in his, in his case. And um, he says, but no matter how, you know, immoral they may seem, that the Constitution does not allow any court to, to take away the mandate of a governor of a state, that they had laid down procedures uh, for, for removal of governors of states. And, and you're talking about morality. Uh, they, they, they are, to COVID, as an extent to which you lend credence to the pronouncements or the decisions of the courts of Nigeria. There's a recent report 
of the State Department of the United States on the judiciary. And it tells a lot of volumes about uh, maybe the inclusion of the justice system and the fact that there are so many inadequacies here and there and um, things that uh, pander to indiscretion and travesty. Um, we were having that discussion the other time, and they all are, are agreed that in spite of the analysis by the Leonard essay and who you mentioned, it is very, very clear that it's a situation that is only in this stage, that the, the proper interpretation to be given is a situation where somebody defects. And at that point, you can, he, is, he is not the governor. And the principles governing Article against the passenger, those authorities that was quoted, they do not apply. Because at that, that time, he has shifted. So you don't bring those principles that is the sitting governor. He became governor by virtue of them, that mandate. And so long as that mandate is no longer with him, he has shifted ground. And immediately upon the judgment of Umahi, I didn't know what caused all these delays because I expected that that judgment would be implemented immediately and get, get him back at office. But then we, we saw how the judiciary was busy uh, running over themselves, the judges running over themselves, issuing out injunctions, stopping his moving out of government house in every state. You know, until then, the matter went, the, the matter did not, uh, the, ju the judgment of Justice Teku, which ignited all these fireworks. Well, was, I don't think it was appealed, but then there's another judgment of the High Court in a body state which was appealed, and the judges in the Court of Appeals, in the Division, came up with a contrary view that, well, he remains. And I quite disagree with that. I don't know whether that judgment was appealed, so that I know the extent to which I can make this analysis, because I know that once a matter is subject to this, you don't discuss on, it, on the media. But uh, to the best that I understand, I think, I think that the judges truly know that, well, there's been some bit of judicial failures connected with the, what, the, the, what the country is going through now. I mean, in terms of um, want of uh, want of decency and want of uh, democratic value and want of uh, societal and national um, um, uh, importance to uh, our existence. And, uh, I mean, it goes to show also that the, the judicial system has failed in its uh, rule to uphold the constitution or to even to uphold the nobility of the of the judicature to the extent that some of these interpretations are warped. So mm -hmm. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that it's a recent U.S. Uh, uh, report on Nigeria, the Nigerian judiciary, which is very damning and I think is very correct. So we don't have to lay so much credence in that because some of these judgments, I know that if it were in the 70s, 80s, Nigerian, uh, Nigerian political system cannot stand but then what I understand, what I know is that when you detect and you have the mandate of the people, you don't go with that mandate. You drop that mandate, you know. And for the fact that if you agree with me, and that is the, that is the level of the point of law also, that, that the right to vote is a fundamental right. Of course, they are not, they are not talking about votes or votes that are inalienable. We are talking about the transferability of votes which also pertains to the transferability of, of fundamental rights, which is, which, is, which is impossible. You don't transfer them, you don't alienate. In the proper mode or direction of the democratic practice, if the occupant of an elective office defects, the first thing to do is to consult the owners of the vote, the people that voted. They say that maybe elections are very expensive, but nothing is too big to be done to get things right. They didn't say what doing is what doing right. We do it correctly. It calls for fresh elections because the person moving cannot move with the votes that I cast as an expression of my own fundamental right to freedom of information, to freedom of association, to freedom of thoughts. You know, the vote carries with it all the essence and ramifications of the personality of the individuals that cast them, not the person who, who was given the mandate. That's my point, and that's my submission. At section 68 sub 1 of the Nigerian constitution um, um, and we we'll look at the provisions uh, in the constitution regarding cross capiting it talks about a split if I can get you clearly I'll, I'll have a good standpoint on what you're saying oh, okay I, I'd like us to move to the constitution get, get, get the phone close to you yeah yeah I, I, I think I think I, I think it's it's uh, I can hear you clearly now but can you hear me a barrister yeah, if you get the close closer all right I can hear you all right very okay uh, uh, let, let's go let's go to the Nigerian constitution the constitution of the federal uh, Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended. Now we look at, for instance, section uh, 68 sub 1, 
uh, we look at that at other parts of the constitution that have to do that has to do with um, uh, uh, defection and also that has to do with the, what is would be the basis for removal of uh, political office holders. Um, um, does the Nigerian constitution allow uh, a member of the legislature to be to be removed uh, without a legislative process? <laughs> well, there, is, there are several processes for removal. There is one of recall. There is the other one that can be done. Um, uh, defection is one of them. And that one is clearly spelled out in the constitution. So they are, they, it doesn't require any legislative process. Immediately you defect, you are out of office. Any remuneration you collect there from is not your own. You must return it to state. And that's the fact. And the fact that you have filed an appeal will not stop the execution or implementation of the judgment over defection. And that's the mistake they made in the Umahi, the Umahi case, uh, in the, the Bonnie Governor's case. Yeah, well, well, I don't know what happened, but it's like everybody was bamboozled or do I use the word hypnotized, even the INEC, that they didn't know that the implication of that judgment is for the governor to back its office immediately the pronouncement was made. So that somebody filed an appeal and all that, and, you know, keep uh, going rig my ruling to remain in office until his appeal is heard does not apply, because the, na but the nature of such adjudication and decision demands that person back his office immediately. So if you're talking about legislative procedure, what other procedure are you talking about? When somebody has abdicated his mandate, somebody has abandoned the mandate, uh, the mandate given to him by a demography, a demography that's alive and, and active and still the demography that can still be consulted, a, de a demography that is human. We are not talking about inanimate things here, or things that are, do not exist or things that are, are not, are not uh, within the confines of human uh, endeavor. We are talking about an expression done by a people, a group of people. So, 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 so Chief Oguche, yeah, yeah, Chief Oguche, if, so should, should we see, um, uh, uh, should, I mean, do we need to get to a point, and how do we get there, where we don't even need to go to court to see uh, a member of the federal legislature or state legislature who's defected without a split in the party uh, um, relinquish his seat because, of course, like like you've said and uh, I earlier said also, Section 68, uh, subsection 1G uh, of the Constitution provides that a member of the Senate or House of Representatives shall vacate his seat or her seat in the House if being a person whose election to the House was sponsored by a political um, a political party before the expiration of the period for which that house was elected, provided that his membership of the latter party is not as a result of a division in the political party of which he was previously a member or of a merger of two or more political parties uh, or factions by one of which he was previously sponsored. So this is, this is clear. Why, is, why are we seeing that people have to go to court to enforce this? Very quickly, no, please. That's the thing about our, democr our democratic process that are fine totally and completely nauseating. To the extent that I understand what a provision is made, you don't have to go to court to effect it. You put it that is what is called due process. But you have this experience in this democracy where people, anything goes, and things are done haphazardly. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't require anybody to go to court to get anybody who defects, who jumps ships from one political party to the other to get out of office and go and begin to look for better pastures in the political party of which he has gone. But that is the situation that a whole lot of things are wrong with the way we are doing things. So that's why somebody would know very well that a particular action is wrong. And he'll just go ahead and do it and ask you to go to court. All right. All right. Interesting. Uh, we have to leave it at that. Chief Fessel Goche, I want to thank you very much for your time. All right. And uh, that's been the size of our show today and, of course, for this week. It's been quite interesting. Thanks for being our guests and joining us throughout the week. We return on Monday with more on Plus Politics. But for now, my name is Kofi Bertels. Have a fantastic weekend.